you will find that the videos in the academy are going to be your first step. Then when you progress and start going into opening up your demo account, then you can start to see what is it going to take to actually place trades in a fake environment, well, excuse me, a real environment with fake money. So load your account up usually about a week after you start your studies, and that way you can start using the harmonic scanner and other resources that will get you some trade alerts. Those trade alerts, not everything is 100% for those that are in our VIP exclusive group that are in my direct group, Tuesday through Thursday, if I'm doing trades in the morning, I deliver up to five trades, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And if you're getting at least 30% of those winning, which we have been and trending at least 60% wins, then you will see you're, you're okay. I mean, it, hopefully you're doing your own trades on your own, but use those to practice. Use those to feed your account and use this harmonic scanner. So it's, it's something that you're paying for every month. If you're paying for it, you might as well use it to the best of your abilities. Um, so I wanted to really just go into what kinds of things that has been helpful that I've been seeing to make this thing pop, all right? So again, Lori Woodruff, make sure that you guys are in a quiet area taking notes because I'm going to give out a lot of sites that I use, lots of indicators, and this is gonna go pretty fast. Um, but again, you can refer back to this video if you'd like to get more information. All right, so. For those that are not, well, that are in the group already, if you are already in the FX trading lounge, you're going to be able to see, if you come over to Facebook, you should already be a subscribed member and have knocked on the door and have asked about FX trading lounge. That is our personal group where we give out information. So the FX trading lounge, there's a lot of times you cannot give information about trading in social media land because it'll be misconstrued as you know you're making all this money you're doing this and it's an enticement what we do in our private group is what we do in our private group so hopefully you are already in that group so you can see the benefits of what we're talking about and how to be a part of the team for educate shown all right so i'm going to stop my video so i can get onto this site easier all right, so just making sure, does everybody have access to the FX Trading Lounge? It does. If anybody does not, make sure at this time you're going over to our Facebook page to make sure that you are looking for this page, request to join, and answer the questions, and I'll let you in. What I have pinned at the top of here, are the first steps to getting started. So anybody that you know that's just getting started, you wanna make sure that they look at this welcome text. Right here, it gives you the first steps of what to do. All right, text me your top five reasons or whoever your upline member is, make sure that you're sending that to them. Why? Because you wanna hold yourself accountable for what you're, why are you here? There's gonna be times in life where it's gonna take you to the left and right, up and down, and you need to figure out what am I doing. So if you haven't already, make sure that you're going through these steps so that you are doing things the right way. Uh, we're not gonna go all into how to set up a demo account and all of that, but uh, for those that also are part of our group, you have access to coming over to mytradinglounge.com. Mytradinglounge.com has everything on here that you need to navigate around the group. The calendar is on here of upcoming events. So if you wanted to see what's going on the calendar, um, you've got all of this. You've got what to, you've got your video here that talks about what is Forex and what is IM Mastery Academy. All of that is on here. Under getting started, for those that are just, if you just need a refresher, it's Sunday. So you may wanna get a refresher on what in the world to do in the first steps, get started set up a demo account that video is back there how to fund your account using cash app all of that is back there okay so again we don't need to go too deep into that we're really just going to focus on the harmonic but i need to kind of bring you up to speed on making sure that you're connected to the team info everybody good give me a one if you hear me and everything is flowing okay got it got it got it got it 
All right, so we've got Facebook, stay connected. Wonderful, thank you, David. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Tanya. Make sure that you're coming over to my trading lounge. Again, anything that we have coming up is going to be on that calendar. And how to's, um, we have a, a YouTube page as well. So if you're going to jump over, make sure that you're also on the YouTube page for any other videos that you need to see that we've done in the past. All right, all that is connected here. Boom, all right. So we can close all that out. Now, for those that are using charts, I'm hoping you're not just using the broker's site. If you're going to use anything, try to come over to tradingview.com. This is where the traders play. This is where all the charts are. It is not specific to any one broker. So you're going to get raw pricing right here. So go to tradingview.com. There's different pricings that you can do. Sign up for the free program. I have Pro Plus because there's a couple of other charts that I enjoy looking at. I like uh, trading with Renko candles, looking at multiple candles at one time, charts, excuse me, at one time. But if you need to use the basic program, please use free. Please use it because this is going to give you a better um, platform to start trading on. You're also going to go back to um, if you need help with the adding the pairs in, when you open up your trading lounge account, these pairs, these Forex pairs are not going to be here. You're going to have to add them in individually. So whichever ones that you have on your phone, maybe in your demo account, you may want to come over here and make sure that you're adding in everything that you're typically going to be trading with because it's just not going to come loaded on there. Okay. Any questions so far? And if you have any questions about trading you itself, there is a helpful video in the I am uh, mastery Academy videos about trading view. So everything is already in the I am mastery Academy videos. So make sure you're util utilizing that. All right, Beth. So we've gone through the charts. Many times you're going to use this. And then when Dan is also using the charts, you'll notice, this is the chart that he's typically working off of. Play around with the indicators, play around with the horizontal lines and trend lines because this is going to be your platform for trading. A lot of these candlesticks, you can change the colors if you want to, but just understand that I'm just putting in here GBP USD. Up here, you're going to be able to change the chart time. If you're looking at the one hour candle for a lot of the charting that you all are doing and that we do, it's on the one hour time. That means every single candlestick represents one hour of activity. If you change it to something smaller, let's say 15 minute and you're doing some scalping or you're doing some, um, some uh, just some scalping, some real quickies, you're gonna be going to the 15 minute chart. And if you notice there's more candles, of course, because it takes up more space because it's only 15 minutes of activity, all right? On the right-hand side, this is all your pricing right here. So if I'm looking at GBP USD, I've got my time, I've got how I wanna look at my candlesticks. If I wanna look at a line chart, I can do that. Let me take these things off. Because my eyes don't see. This is a line chart. So sometimes when you're looking at this, when you're wanting to put your horizontal ray lines, it's a little bit easier to see your points to put them on. Especially for support and resistance, using the line chart is so helpful so that you can actually see better. Because if I turn the candles back on, there, it's less noise. It's less noise with the candlesticks when you do the lines, all right? So lines I use a lot, candles I use a lot. That's pretty much it. Now the indicators are super important and what we're gonna use for the harmonic scanner. Shot these down. I use the 50 and the four as a moving average. 
the 50 and the four to help out. So in the morning, when I'm looking to find trades, I'm going to the harmonic scanner, that's one place. I'm also going to use the 50 and the four, that's another place. I'm also gonna use the Fibonacci retracement tool, that's another tool. So we'll try to cover all that and how it's helpful, but all of the basis, the start is with the harmonic scanner. Tap on it and you can delete the lines away. Tap on the line and you can make the line go away. Um, if you are utilizing the Fibonacci retracement, if you look at this pitchfork over here on the left hand side, I'm coming over here and going down to the Fib retracement. If I wanted to do a Fibonacci retracement, that is simply that's a whole nother video, but that's going to be taking what goes up must come down. Just remember that. What goes down in price must come back up. So if you take a look at this chart, for example, if I look at my highest point and just go back to the most recent highest point and go down to my lowest point, the Fibonacci retracement is good for letting us know the market has come down. This is 100% movement downward. And for us to come back, typically the market's going to come back at least, it's going to retrace back at least 50% of this movement. So if I take my Fibonacci retracement, take it to the top, I just had the Fibonacci retracement over here, clicked on it, tapped on the top of here, and then I'm gonna stretch it down to the lowest point. And move it over so you can see. Tap it. And do it again. Get your Fibonacci retracement. Fib retracement. It's right over here on the left-hand side. Go from your highest point to your lowest point. These, these guys, this is just a way that you can just start independently getting trades on your own. Our harmonic scanner is great, but it's also going to not give you everything when, when you need it. So this is going to be giving you info when you want to go in here and get things on your own. Now, if you take a look at these numbers here, zero to 23%, 38%, 50%, 61%, 78 and 100. These numbers, these calculations are already in the Fibonacci retracement tool, so you do not have to put these in here. But once you do this, what you're looking for is that range of where should I get in for a buy? Because if the market has already rallied down, at some point it's going to come back up. So what I'd like to look for, that sweet spot, is between 23% and 50% to put in my buy order. So if I had seen this like around this area right here, I'm going to put a buy stop right around here. Let me put in my horizontal line because you're expecting it to go back up. So if you ever see a buy stop order, that means the price has not gotten there yet. You expect it to go here. I'm gonna push, place it right there. And it's gonna range somewhere between that and the 50% line. I'm going to go pull another horizontal. So you make the decision of the price between here and here. And did it not give it to you already? So timing is everything. So if you would have seen this right here when the market would have started to come back up, you would put your price in at 1.27783, right around here. And you come out, however many pips that you want personally, if you want 10, 15, if you want 20 pips, you would just add that to your price here and that would be your take profit price. All right, so that is one way to use the Fibonacci retracement. That's on a buy. Of course, it works in the opposite direction, but use that 23 to 50% area to place your pending order, to place your pending order. If you had caught it like right around here, I, I would have put it in as a market execution and then taken it up, maybe 10 pips. 
for me personally, I definitely put a stop loss in and I would have put the stop loss in down here, down here, and then put my take profit in somewhere between 10 and 20 pips. But you personally make that decision on what your take profit would be. And you also just don't want to uh, put your stop loss in at amount that's gonna be too much for you. You should be not, you should only be risking up to 3% of what's in your account. Questions, questions, questions. I wanna look for another opportunity if you were to see the market going down and then you put your Fibonacci retracement in. Here's one here. If I see this movement right here, this movement is going up. At some point, <laughs> perfect head and shoulders, at some point you're going to see this is the top. And of course, here's your bottom. So if this is rallying up, what goes up must come back down. So I'm going to pull my Fibonacci retracement, take it from the bottom this time, and take it to the very top. Stretch it over so you can see your numbers. And remember that sweet spot is anywhere between 23 to 50%. So this one, since it is going up, you're anticipating the market to go down. I want to catch it here. Here's 23. And I want to catch it somewhere in between this pocket. And here's the 50%. So somewhere in between here will I place my sell stop order because that way you could set it and forget it. So for many people who are busy, the Fibonacci retracement is awesome because you can see a heavy movement either going up or down, put in your pending order for a sell stop or a buy stop and go on about your life. Um, the harmonic scanner is going to do just that as well. And you're going, I'm setting all this up so you can use these with the harmonic scanner when you're about to place these trades. All right. So does anybody have any questions so far? Everybody good? All right, awesome, okay. So let's go over to the chart and let's see how this stuff puts all into place. Now, as I said, I used the 50 moving average and the four. And if you want to place those, you come over here where it says indicators and strategies. I want you to look for moving average. I'm not going to place a new one in here, but you're going to look for that. And what you're going to have is your settings are the length is 50. And that's going to be a blue line and your four moving average is going to be red 50 and the four i also have a new one here called the parabolic sar parabolic sar so this is going to be great to help know the movement is it heavy on a buy on a sell when you're using the harmonic scanner so go up here and look for parabolic SAR. P-A-R-A. -A. Here it is right here. Parabolic SAR. Those are the three indicators. That's it that I'm using when I'm looking at the harmonic scanner. And these are the numbers here that I have. 
call it whatever you like. I call this one of my footprints. Call it my footprints. All right, so let's take a look now at the harmonic scanner and how all of this plays out. So you can go right, instead of going off through your back office, you can go to harmonics.im. You have to be an active member. You have to be an active member in order to be able to use this because these are tools that are part of our membership. Three areas that you want to attack. Now the harmonic scanner has been with the company since 2013. So just imagine IM Mastery Academy, used to be called I, IML, iMarkets Live. They have relationships with different brokers and these brokers are feeding their chart information to us. So depending on who your preferred broker is, you come up here and you pick out who is your broker. I personally use FX Choice and Hugo's Way. Between those two, it's like Safeway, Shoppers, Giant. They all sell food. Sometimes we have different pricing. You just have a personal preference. Not one is better than the other. I don't trade that much cryptocurrency. Some people do. So Hugo's Way is going to be the platform brokerage to use if you are using Forex and cryptocurrency. For others, FX Choice, if you're just trading uh, Forex, is just fine. When you go in here, you're going to have to change your broker every time. You're going to have to change the candlestick every time. So make sure that when you're coming and logging in, it doesn't save it. Just because you were on there a couple of hours ago, you have to still come on here and put it back on. So three areas when you log in here, make sure, bam, hit the brokers, put your broker in there. Boom. Your time chart, if you're on the 15, one hour, four hour, change that here. And just double check over here on the right hand side what time candlesticks that you were on. Over here on your right hand side, you've got all the broker pairs that they're saying, come and get me, come eat me, come take me. And usually, guys, the first five are the yummiest and the, the, the most uh, updated ones. Anything below that has probably hit take profits already. It just hasn't refreshed and deleted off the page yet. All right, so let's imagine the market is closed right now, so everything is frozen until 5 p.m. So let's imagine we are going in to Euro GBP. This is the very first one. Let's just dive in here and take a look at it. The ideal times to come into the harmonic scanner are between 8 and 9 a.m., around lunchtime, and then again around 9 to 11 p.m. It seems to be that that's when the most resets happen around that time. So when I'm trading in the morning, my trade plan is I'm trading from 8 and 11 and I'm done. I may come back before dinner time, but I'm not in the charts like Mr. Dan is. Dan is probably the most addictive trading person I know and he's probably in here right now getting set up for y'all at three o'clock. <laughs> so <laughs> make sure that when you go in here, you are always pulling the trade the times that I go in here are 8 a.m., between 8 and 9 a.m., lunchtime, and between 9 and 11 p.m., and all that is Eastern time. And you will begin to see how this makes sense. Now, I know when you first go in here, you're like, what the hell is all the A, B, C, D? Remember, a lot of this stuff is already pre-set up from the brokers. They've done all the work for you. Much of the head and shoulders is already done for you. The Fibonacci is already done for you. All you need to do is come in here and copy what's on the page and get back to your life. This is the one system that most people overlook and a lot of people more could be joining and trading if they saw this platform right here. So remember, all of this setup, you could move it. If I move all of these letters just for a second, they'll just come right back on. So I can't take them off the page. They'll just snap back on. So these setups are already done by the broker. I want you to look for a special letter D. That's it. D. That's it. When you follow the D, you're going to find success in finding the D. And when you find the D, you get excited because that's where the broker has said, come here. Look, look. Right here is your entry your take profit one, two, and three. 
And you're also going to have a stop loss price, which is snuggled up there. I had to move the price. Tap on the screen so you can get a full screen. Tap on it again, and you, if you had any indicators down below, it'll pop up. So I'm just gonna tap on it so everybody can see a little bit larger. Remember, you're coming over here to go shopping for the most recent pair. So as of Friday, this is what we saw. I'm going to enlarge in this so my folks in the back can see. Remember, every time you open this, use this on your computer, not on your phone, because it will be totally jumbled up. When you open up this um, app on your computer, on your tablet, make sure that you are moving the screen over so you can see. All right, so we found the D. What we need to place a trade are three different prices. We need the entry price. And remember, for this Euro GBP, this price is currently at 0.85960. That's where the current price is, right where this red and dotted line is. What the market said was you could enter the market at 0.86408. You could have entered it up here. Anytime that you see that the entry is up top and your take profits are down below, the broker is letting you know this is going in a downward position. So guess what? Are we doing a buy or a sell? Let me know. Let me know. Are we doing a buy or a sell? If this take profits are going down below the entry, what is that indicating that we do? Somebody, anybody. We're doing a sell. Correct, right. So take profit one is simply give me some money. Take profit two is give me some more money. And take profit three is give me the most money. Will it always reach TP3? No. No, it does not. So you have to be super careful of just putting it in TP3 at once. I just do one price at a time. So if I saw this, let's say it's Monday, it's 8 a.m., and let's say I'm sitting in front of the computer, I'm about to get ready to do my work, but I wanna put my trades in first. Here we go. I'm gonna look for TP1, and I'm going to put that in only. So if my current price is at 85.960, and the take profit one is saying, come on out at 85.257, How much pips is that? Can you tell the difference? That's about 71 pips between uh, the price and its first take profit. That's a lot. If you were just looking to manage your account and do 10 or 15 pips at a time, then you monitor and modify that on your own. There are a lot of times where I'm just going into the harmonic scanner just to find out where is my D, where is it saying the market is going? I don't always take TP1 because it may be too far for me. I'm okay with if grabbing 10 pips and dip. I'm okay with going for 20, but if you're going for 70, you're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer. 10, you, you might be able to get that within the afternoon. You got me? Now, if you start to see you're getting close to this profit price here, you know you can go into your phone and you can modify the price. So for those that may not know how to place the trade, well, let's go back to this. If I'm just going to modify and just say, I just want to get 10 pips out of here, then I'm just going to subtract 10 from my price and that's going to leave me with 0 0.85860. Just for this example, I'm just modifying it on my own. Just letting you know that. If you look at the stop loss price up here, it's telling you the stop loss price is based upon this entry, okay? You got it a little bit later. You came in the game a little bit late. So you're gonna have to modify your stop loss a little bit too. So you want to probably look at the top of your price where before it started coming down, 
and probably put your stop loss up there. Where it says D, that's probably where the market turned and started coming down. That may be where you want to do your resistance and put your stop loss at that price. Watch your stop loss price because if you were to put it too close to your entry, then you may get stopped out too many times. So if I'm going for 10 pips, I might be going for 20 for my stop loss. 20 for my stop loss. I'm okay with that depending on what range I'm going in. Sometimes the GBP pairs, they move faster. You may wanna move your stop loss a little bit further out. A personal decision, y'all personal decision. So for this example, I'm going to do my stop loss at 0.86. And just put 200. I've got my entry here. I've got my take profit is going to be in between here because it's coming down. And then I've got my stop loss just in case it goes in the opposite direction. So you're going to come over to your phone and place this baby as a market execution or maybe as a sell stop, depending on what time that you pick this up. When you go to your MetaTrader 4 and you're ready to place trades, remember at the bottom, You've got these indicators here. You've got your, your quotes, your candles, and your, your account information is all here. So for example, if you are placing this trade, you're looking for the pair that you're going into, double check it, hit trade or new order if it's an Android. You wanna look at the top of the page and it's going to give you an indication, what do you want to do? Are you doing a buy stop? You tap that. <clears throat> Are you doing a market execution, meaning you're going right into the market right now? Or if it's a pending order, you're thinking the price hasn't got where I want it to yet. Maybe it's a buy stop or a sell stop. In the academy, in the 100 section, if you have not gone over the pending orders, please go in the 100 section and they go over the pending order. So it'd make a little bit more sense as to using a limit order or a stop order. So once you tap on here, market execution, this drop down is going to happen. You're letting, you're letting MetaTrader 4 know, what am I doing? If you're doing a market execution and you see it's coming down, boom, you hit market execution. Now you're going to fill in the blanks of your pricing. Let's do a market execution. Okay. Here's a market execution. Android, you're on the right. iPhone, I did this to the left. If you need this um, PowerPoint slide, it's on mytradinglounge.com under resources. So if you needed to pull it up, it is already there on how to place a trade. So you've got your market execution. Down below it, you've got what your lot size is. That's totally dependent on you. If you have a $100 or $200 account, your ass should not be putting in a dollar lot size. If you've got a few thousand dollars in your account, then you could manage a little bit larger lot size. But the heavier that you do, the more risk that you're going to lose it as well. So again, we also have the helpful resource guide on what your lot size should be based upon your account size under resources in mytradinglounge.com. All right. Um, lot size, this goes right in here. Y'all, I still use a 0 0.01. I still have a 0 0.01, whether I have a $1,000 account or a $200 account. I'm doing this for consistency, not for show off purposes. You're doing this for consistency. So 0 0.01, put your ego aside. Yes, it is uh, 10 cents. But if you can get great at using this and you see 10 cents, move it up from there. Move it up from there. It's okay. But y'all ain't got to be, you know, hella dollars tomorrow. Here, the pricing is going to be on your left. For sellers, pay attention to this price. Pay attention to this price on the right if you are buying that particular currency pair. If you're putting in a buy order, 
Price is always a little bit higher. If you see the pips are a little bit more expressed, bigger, pay attention to that. One, if you're placing a sell order, that's the pricing that you're picking up paying here. So if you ever paid attention, like why are there two different prices there? It's because one is for buyers and one is for sellers to the left. And how, how you can remember that for iPhone and actually for our phone too, look underneath, it says sell by market and it also says buy by market. So if it ever trips you up on which one did Lori say, buyers always pay more money. So that price is always higher. For Android, just look down. Your sell price is down below. Here, here it is. And buy, that's your buy price. So now you've got your price. Here's your stop loss. Excuse me, your for Androids, the green underlined figure, your price is going to go here. The one that's underlined in red is stop loss price. So if you know by going back to the harmonic scanner, if we know our take profit price is here and our stop loss price is here, whatever you modify, you're going to just move that over here. Your take profit price goes in here. You tap on it, backspace it, and put it in there correctly. You come over here to the stop loss price. You tap on it, backspace your price that you need, and type it in there. For iPhone, it's pretty self-explanatory. It tells you the stop loss right here. You tap on it, and you just place the price that you want in there. Same thing with take profit. Okay? So that's all set. You double check it. You make sure I've got the right pair. I'm putting in a market execution. My lot size is enough. And my take profit price is in here. And I'm always, always, always putting in a stop loss price. Any questions? All right. And then you're going to hit, in this particular case, because we saw the market was going down, you're going to hit sell. Sell. Let's come back over here. Then you would just go pick up another one, GBP, MZD. Here's the D. We see the take profit one has already been hit. That line right here, the price has already been hit. So there's no need going for that price. You may want to wait till it hits take profit two. Price is up here. You may want to put a pending order in or a market execution for waiting for this bus right here. The further that the price, the candlesticks get away from the D, stay away from it. Like for this example, what you don't want to do is put this in anytime soon because the D is here. The take profits are up here. So it was saying, hey, we're going in a buy pretty soon. But I'm going to go to the dry cleaners. I'm going to go to the movies, visit my girlfriend, got to go drop my bill money off. It has not even come back up to the entry level yet. This is not one trade you're going to take anytime soon. Not anytime soon. But if you choose to, you can definitely place a pending order. Here's your entry. Put in a buy stop order for this price, 140.679. And then you add in, if you want to take it up to the TP1, then you put that in. That pending order can trigger when you're at work. That pending order can trigger when you're sleeping. Put it in. It's okay to put in as a pending order. Everything doesn't have to be, I'm sitting in front of my computer. It has to be an execution right now. Okay? So just so you'll know, it doesn't always have to be that way. But if it's in here doing all this and it hasn't gone back to the entry price yet, Chill out, don't do a market execution, but go ahead, feel comfortable about putting in a buy stop because it's on its way up. And we'll look at one more and I'll show you the parabolic. Now, here's the D, I went to NZD JPY. Here's the D, here's the take profit. So this is a buy anticipation. This joker has gone to the store, to the movies, uh, looked at a couple houses with this realtor and has not come back up to entry yet. What are you going to do? What kind of order would you place in there? A buy stop. A buy stop, right. 
See, so you see how simple you can still use this tool. It's so simple that it's giving you the answers to the test. Understand that as time goes on, these prices do move with time. So you may think, well, I put in 68.80, but price did shift a little bit. And um, so you do have to pay attention that, you know, you're waiting. You don't have to just be patient for the market to get back there. But all of this work is done for you. The setups are already done. Head and shoulders, Fibonacci retracement, all the calculations are already set up. Look for the D. Look for your entry. Has it reached there yet? And then look for the take profit one and use your best judgment on how do I, how many pips do I personally want? Because you may not want to go 30 pips, like for this one here. You may not want to wait 20 or 30 pips. You may just want to get 10 and get out. It's easier for you to pick up 10 than it is to wait for 30 because it might get in the market up to 22 pips and that joker comes back and retraces in a different direction. You feel me? So no need to be greedy, a little bit at a time. Okay. Hey everybody. Welcome. Welcome. We're going to be wrapping up in a minute. Now let me show you the, the parabolic SAR. The parabolic SAR is an indicator that is a stop in reversal. Has anybody used the parabolic SAR? It's about to be good. I call it my footprints. <laughs> I call it footprints. True, um, I'm just doing this sporadically. So if I need to, I certainly can. All right, so let's look at the parabolic. Now I already have it saved. So what I'm going to do, okay, so remember, you went to indicators and you pulled up, search for it, parabolic, SAR, okay? You're going to get that. You're going to pull that up. And this is what it's going to look like on your chart. I call it starships and footprints. <laughs> Always got to have that creative mind. All right. Now, I'm going to, if you notice, let me blow this up a little bit. If you see these stars right here, this lets us know where is the movement most with these candles. So sometimes when you look at the harmonic scanner, it may not be ready. It may not be ready right now for the direction that we're going in. And for this particular one, very hard because the market has stopped right now. GBP and ZD. I want you to take a look at how this works. When you place this on, this is giving us more of a momentum indication. Trying to blow it up for you. Hold on. Here's the parabolic SARS right here. This is the stop and reversal indicator that I place on my harmonic scanner. You can also do this on TradingView. If you look at the D and you look to see, all right, well, my direction is telling me take profit one, two, three. I'm going in a downward position. That means I'm going in the cell. If I look and see if these parabolic stars are going down, feel confident that it's going in that direction now, right now. Now, let's just take it back and let's just see how this parabolic did in the past. Like here, let's just say you were to get in the market here and you see this is a one, two, three, four candlesticks were going down. You see the parabolic stars going down with it? The, as long as you've got at least three of these parabolic stars in motion, feel confident that that baby is going down. It's going down. Now, when it's going in the opposite direction, you see the candlesticks now reversed, got down here, got a little bit tired. Now the buyers are picking up speed. 
if you see at least three of these parabolic stars in motion going upward, if they're going upward towards up, then that lets you know that that's in a by movement. And it did just that, up, 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 up. These are the 50 and the four and this together are helpful indicators so that you can be an a, a independent trader. There's gonna be times that you're gonna need trade alerts. You're gonna to need to go and get things off of uh, Go Live. Some of the uh, educators give us there. Some of the apps that send you trade signals, that's cool. But these are gonna help you do this while you're at work. Do this while you're waiting for your babies to get out of um, gym or school. Follow the star. Follow the parabolic star. I'm gonna give you another one. GBP, JPY. And I'm just going right down. Move it over, move it over. Now, if you look at here, if you pull this up on Monday and you saw the harmonic says, all right, well, I see the D is here. My entry is here. This should be going in a buy, right? But if you looked at the parabolic stars, it's like, nah, we're not finished going down. You see that the stars are on top of the candlesticks. It, that one star right here is starting to peak up. When you see three of those, now get ready, then it's coming back upwards. That's how I use the parabolic star to give me a, a, a confirmation if I should be going into a market execution now, right now. Does that help anybody? Parabolic SAR. It's a free indicator. Pull it on TradingView. Use it on the harmonic scanner for sure. That way you know when to get in. Remember, if you see three of these parabolics together and it's going upward, go on for a buy. If you see them at the top of the candlesticks coming down, wait for the three parabolics to be there and then feel comfortable of putting in a sell order. <laughs> Ain't that worth your membership per month? <laughs> um, I usually look at the first five because what we're not gonna do is we're not going to let, let me try to go into something that's further down. If you pull something that's way down here, the D is here. Look, 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 look. Here's the D all the way back here. It did all this movement. It went through take profit one, two, and three. Don't ask me why it's still sitting on the charts. It is. It just is. But just stay around the first couple of ones, go in from time to time and pull out some free trades, y'all. That's it. Um, the 50 and the four, I'll tell you real quickly or before we finish up in the next five minutes, the 50 and the four is something I can use just on a 15 minute chart, a 15 minute chart. And I'm gonna show you how that works. Let's look back at the candles. And you can hide the indicators and that's all I did. When you have the indicators on here, you see this I, you can hide them and I'm gonna bring them back and I have SAR, okay? Let me just pick a random pair. What I do in the mornings is I'm gonna start at the top and if you also notice in the mornings, I and Dan only focus on Euro pairs and GBP pairs, that's it. If there's anything else thrown in there, it's because Something else might be going on with those pairs and there's nothing there, or a lot of things might be consolidating. Um, but you can do this on your own. I want you to pay attention to how the 50 and the four will allow you to be an independent trader. Let's start at the top. And all I do is start at the top of my list over here and just go down. The 50 and the four are indications to know when should I get in the market or out? Get in or out. Here's a perfect example. When you've got your 50, which is the blue line, crossing over the four, these are indications of get in, there's a price change. There's a price change. If you've got your blue line, and I look at it like it's the ocean, if the candlesticks are above 
my blue line, my 50 line, then you are in a buy. You're in a buy. You should be looking for buys. And look in here, right here, it crossed. So let's jump down. We've got 15 minutes because I want to do this on a tight schedule. You don't want to do a one hour on this. You want to catch it as soon as possible. Here, the 50 cross. So right around here, would it be safe to put in a buy order? And look what happened. The market moved up. And to measure that distance, you got this ruler right here. And you could just measure space. You can measure about 28 pips. 28 pips, OK? You might have just needing 10. You might just need 15. But if you see anything where it is crossing, find out is the blue line, my 50 moving average below the candlesticks. In this case, it's yes. Go ahead and put a market execution buy in for 10 to 15 pips. Let's look in the past and see when did it cross in the opposite direction. and stay in that trade until it crosses again. Some traders just trade the 50 and the four. When it crosses back in the opposite direction, they put in the sell order. This one just touched, so it doesn't really count. So let's just look at this brief example right here. Look at this crossing right here. The 50 is now on top of the candlesticks. So that means when that crossed over the four, you're in the sell position. And that's exactly what it did. If you take a look at these two candlesticks and measure the distance, let's just say you got in right here. Between here and here, that was about 11 pips. Do you see why I just go for 10 pips and dip? Because you're not gonna stress yourself out looking for a whole bunch of pips. Get in, get out. You're still a trader if you just go for five pips. What if you put in two trades at the same time? It's called extra money. So instead of you going, you can twin trade and put in, all right, I'm just go for five pips. Psychologically, you're thinking, uh, it's just five pips. But no, if you put it in two or three times, you put that one trade in two or three times, it's just duplicated. So instead of you just making five pips, you just made 10 pips or 15. It got, it hit the market faster. It hit your take profit faster. So watch for the crossings. The blue line to me is my ocean line. Any candlesticks that are below the ocean line, I'm putting in a sell order. Right here, you would have put that market execution sell in. Just go down for 10 pips and it'll close you out. It'll close you out. Put your stop loss in about 10 pips above the cross. If it crossed here, about 10 pips above, 10 pips below, you're protected. And it didn't even touch the stop loss, nowhere near it. Okay. I don't, I don't fool with Bitcoin. So I know somebody wants to know about it. I don't do it um, with the 50 and the four because I just don't trade it that often. I stick with the Forex pairs. But you can take a look at any time these crossings happen. Like this crossing happened right here. If you got it, you saw it happen, you would put in a buy order. Ride that puppy up, and the wider that this is, the better, because you're going up and up and up in price. Until it starts getting a little bit close to one another, stay in it. Stay in it. Stay in it. You see it's still going up. It hasn't crossed over yet. It hasn't crossed over yet. You still stay in there. That's a couple days of activity. When it gets a little close like this, start to get close because now you could have closed it out. Here, you closed it out on February 28th where it started. back here 24 hours ago, okay? So the 50 and the four is your friend. Use it, play with it, 
<laughs> I will put this in uh, the Facebook. I'll put it in the Facebook page. And I'll also put it on our YouTube page so you can reference this again. But I hope this was helpful. Um, what I wanted to do is just wrap up and just answer any questions. Um, tradingview.com, make sure that you are going there to get your free platform. If not anything else, if you wanted to use the other um, Pro Plus to get additional, that's fine. But use TradingView, it's free. Use the basic, it's fine. Make sure that you're coming over to harmonic.harmonics.im. Check your broker, check your time, and check your time over here every single time. When you put in here your SAR, you can put in the indicator and you can save this so you can always come back to the SAR. I call it Starship in Footprints. But remember, that indicator is going to help you know the momentum. Is it going upward? Like here, if you just look at the harmonic scanner and you have the, the SARS on here, look at here, we've got at least three. And just know, hey, this thing is going in a buy right now. It feels pretty good that it's going, the momentum is strong. If you wanna just look at the 50 and the four crossing, look at the 15 minute chart, Watch for the crossing. As soon as the cross happens, put in your market execution. Put your stop loss in about 10 pips above or below, and then just go ahead and put your profit in there for 10 or 15 pips. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Um, and also down here, Dan had just reiterated about the MACD. That's another one. If you wanted to use MACD, um, it also just kind of confirms whether you are in a buy or not. Like for this particular, if I looked at CAD CHF right now, here's my parabolic looks to be in a good buy move. And the MACD kind of just confirms um, the 50 and the four kind of situation. So if you wanted to add the MACD into your indicators, do that as well. Remember, if you needed to look at the pricing on a larger level, double tap on the main screen so you can see a bigger picture. Double tap on it again to bring back any indicator that you may have on the bottom. All right. Um, and I think that will be it for now. You guys have three o'clock coming up. And if you are... Um, staying tuned to our trading. We are going to be doing trading sessions um, more so once to twice a month in the buoy location until we get that finalized, but one to two times a month in the buoy schedule. Uh, excuse me, location if you want to be in the Maryland area. Always going to be doing this on Sundays until further notice. Um, Dan has a ball doing this with y'all. And so we're going to keep doing that. But mark your calendars for April 11th for the boot camp, which is going to be in College Park, Maryland, which will be an all day session, an all day session so that you can really start to advance your uh, space in this right here in trading. Um, I'm going to do a video on Facebook in a few moments just so I can start getting some people to get information about how we use the harmonic scanner. So if you wanted to share that video on your page, feel free because all it is is simply letting people know how we use. Most people, when they hear about what we do, it's complicated. So try not to let people know, I trade Forex. They're like, what the hell are you talking about? They don't know what you're talking about. So be sure that you are sharing with people how it works and show them how it works. If you have to sit down there, open up your laptop and let people see how the laptop looks with the harmonic scanner, then let them see that, okay? Yes, I know you're going to be ready. Um, so that's exactly all I do. When you, sh when you show people how it works, and you're like, oh, that's what you do. That's all it is. That's how I got, I've gained a lot of people to join the group. Um, no pressure or anything like that, but I, we belong to a group that actually shows people how to make money, multiply their money. You're in a recession coming up. You've got a lot of things right now tugging on the economy that you are in a prime place 
where you want to remind people this is recession proof. No matter what's going on with the stock market, no matter what is going on in the economy, viruses, whatever they want to throw out there for population control, you are in an ideal place. And trading currency is going to be, no matter what's going on out there, you're still going to be able to create income for yourself. So definitely make sure that people know that. And I'll see you guys later. If you want to stay tuned, share the video, share the video on your own page. Uh, but I'm going to have some fun online showing people what we do. All right. Are there any questions? Stay tuned. Um, MyTradingLounge.com is where we are. Are there any questions? Marcel, Jim, Banks, True, Michael, Deborah, Rose, Tanya, you guys have been awesome.